him Lord, how is he his son? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? He's greater than just a son of David. He's Lord of David. And that comes from Psalms 110 in verse 1. And the Lord said to my Lord, Sit in my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. In Psalms 2, he says basically the same thing. In Psalms 2. Why doeth the heathen rage? And the people imagine a vain thing. You see, for the, uh, the kings took counsel against him, against the Lord and against his anointed. But nevertheless, God will laugh at them. Why? Because this is God's king. This is God's king sitting upon God's throne. Well, let me, uh, let me uh, share some things with you here, perhaps. Go back to the book of Ruth, and I, I want you to focus on this one. I won't be long, but uh, he is king. And I don't know why I'm here I'm trying to <laughs> steer, steer clear of the interference that I'm experiencing. think that what, what, we're, what we're dealing with here is that that uh, in the book of Ruth the word kinsman is found a number of times. I, I have them listed but I did not count them. You're going to find them there at least uh, 10 to 12 times. And uh, Ruth was a Moabitist but she came back with Naomi. She experienced a loyalty to Naomi in verse 16 when she said, Entreat me not to leave thee or to turn back from following after you. This is Ruth chapter 1. For wherever you go, I will go, and wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if anything but death parts you and me. What a commitment. Loyalty means an awful lot in the family. And this more righteous woman said, Ruth, you're going back home. And uh, it would be so nice if many Christians would decide to go back home. Naomi was in a foreign country. And in that foreign country, things didn't happen the way that she thought they were going to happen. Although I'm not blaming Naomi, I blame Elimelech. If I'm going to cast any blame, I can't blame anything. The Bible seems to put the weight upon a husband. He said, let's go and find some bread. And so he went. And the judgment of God came upon him as a result of it. But finally, Naomi comes back saying, I went out full. I had a husband. I had two strong sons when I left. But I'm coming back now with simply one daughter-in-law and another daughter-in-law who says, I'm going back to my idol gods. I'll not go to Bethlehem the house of bread, the place where the Messiah is to be born. And so Naomi comes back in pain, agony. And uh, look at, I'll just give you the places here. This kinsman redeemer in chapter 2 and verse 20, chapter 3 and verse 9, chapter 3 and verse 12 and verse 13, it's used twice. Chapter 4 and verse 3, Chapter 4 and verses 4, it's used four times, uh, five times really in verse 4 and then in verse 6. And it's used sometimes as an imperative, commands from God. 
And the point of the Leveret Law was that if a brother married a wife and he didn't have any children by her and he died, this is found in the book of Deuteronomy 25 and uh, verses 7 through 10. If he died, God said the brother of the dead brother should go in unto his brother's wife to raise up seed to the name of the dead brother. And Boaz, who is a distant relative, a wealthy man, a rich man, had plenty of money, but he yielded to the closest relative. The closest relative said, I don't want to marry a Moabitess woman. No, you can marry her if you want to. So Boaz married her. And although she had been married for 10 years, never had a son, once God brought Boaz and Ruth together, what happened? Pick it up in chapter 4, verse 14, 13. So Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife. And when he went in to her, the Lord gave her conception, and she bore a son. And I think I read the rest of it going down through verse 21, uh, starting at verse 21. Solomon begot Boaz, and Boaz begot Obed. Obed begot Jesse, and Jesse begot David. And David is a great king, and Jesus Christ is of the house and lineage of David. Why did they go to Bethlehem? Because of the inheritance in Jesus Christ, our lovely, wonderful Lord. Well, my point here today is this. God is in the process of establishing a kingdom. And he wants us to learn his ways, his word, in the context of the local church so that we can become all that God would have each one of us to be. As this kinsman redeemer reaches out his hand to you today to say, I had no right, and really Christ had no right to ever be born as a human being. Why? Because he's separate from sinners. He's so pure and holy until the heavens are not clean in his eyesight. But yet, he was born of the Virgin Mary, born of a woman, like Galatians 4, 4 tells us, of the Virgin Mary, so that he could identify with you and me in terms of being able to forgive us for our sins and our wrong deeds and thus receive forgiveness from the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me illustrate, and then I'm closing. My wife and I were in Paris. I don't mean to boast or brag about that. I thank you for being so kind and compassionate and for carrying on the work here. You did a wonderful job. You really did. My wife and I were in Paris. We had bought our ticket through a wonderful sales department over here, AAA. We thought we had the best. Everything was paid for. We got on the train in Paris. And we were going down to Frankfurt, and the train took off, and in the middle of the journey, the conductor came through and he said, let me see your ticket. And uh, I said, my ticket? So we went in, and we showed him what we had. And he looked, and he said, this is not a ticket. He said, this is a reservation. What happened to your ticket? Ticket? <laughs> this is the ticket here. I thought, he said, no, this, this, this simply tells me that you have a reservation to be on this, this train, but you do not have a ticket. Well, he wrestled with us, and I finally said, well, listen, mister, here's my charge card. I don't know how much I have to pay in order to... <laughs> In order to get to Frankfurt, I hope you won't put us out down here in the middle of nowhere in Germany. So 
Oh, he said, well, give me your charge card. I gave him my charge card. 383 euros. Came to 500 and some dollars. And then he said, the next train, you also need a ticket. You're going to go to Lipset. And that's 125 euros. <laughs> I said, well, I thought I had my ticket, but it looked like enough. Well, the bottom line was this. My point for illustrating this is that I hope that you have a legitimate ticket to be a part of the kingdom of God. Because if your ticket is not valid, you're not going to go to heaven. You may do all the good works that you think you want you need to do, but unless you've got a ticket, and so once we paid all of that money, my wife and I, we went back and we scratched and we found the Euro Pass. Well, that's what he was asking for. <laughs> Show me your Euro Pass. Well, it's too late now. I paid the money. We're still waiting to get the money back. <laughs> but if you don't have a ticket, you won't go to heaven. And you won't be a part of this kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ unless have a ticket. Amen? Amen? You see, David's tomb is here, but the tomb of Jesus, oh no. Oh no, you won't find a tomb. You say, here lies the remains of Jesus Christ. Uh-uh! -oh, blasphemy! Because the angel tells us today, he's not here. He is risen, as he said. Come on and see the place where the Lord lived. You couldn't say that about David. Peter could stand on the Temple Mount and say, David's bones are right over there. But not so with the Lord Jesus Christ. And to get that ticket, you must put faith and trust in the Lord Jesus. Father, bless the word today, I pray. And as we celebrate this season of the year, focusing on the birth of Jesus. Lord, make it real in our individual hearts, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so I'll stand as we sing uh, the real reason for <coughs> the Christmas.